uh, denied of uh, something I tried to pursue since I was three years old, and it, it's all gone. And, and it, it went up so quick, and, and you know, without any explanations or anything or any help from anybody, and it, it's mentally and physically, it, it, it can ruin a person. It's, it basically did that for me. It isn't just the pain and, uh, and of the disability that he's suffering. It isn't just the pain that he's got from a, a back problem or anything like that. There's a mental thing that happens here, and it happens to every athlete, I can assure you. The fact that they can't physically play anymore mentally disturbs them, and it's as bad as the pain they suffer. You get an opportunity tonight to see for the first time on our telecast Roger Belanger. He won an outstanding game last night. The young rookie who was a first round draft choice of the Pens this past summer put on a great display having six shots last night but even more importantly kind of set the tone with a physical part of the game with some great checks. Boy did he ever. You know uh, he put a hit on Thomas Erickson last night that you could hear up in the press box and I think that one will go down in history. Uh, he didn't have any points last night and yet he was the game's number two star just because he was hitting so many people. He just runs over people. He's that tough center iceman that the Penguins have been looking for for several years really and I think he's going to be a real surprise, and ironically, he came because uh, the Penguins made the deal with the Flyers last year and got that 16th pick in the draft.
Roger Belanger's future was unlimited when the 18-year-old pulled on the sweater of the Pittsburgh Penguins in September of 1984. Chosen with the great Mario Lemieux to take the worst team in the NHL to a Stanley Cup, the first round draft choice was a hard shooting, hard skating prospect. But five years later, Belanger's boyhood dream of being a rich, successful NHL star lay in tatters. Three back operations had rendered him unable to work, let alone play hockey. Belanger was broken financially and emotionally by his nightmare. Today he feels abandoned by the Penguins, his agent Don Meehan, and his union. Everything revolved around hockey, and now everything is away from hockey. And I, I, um, I can't skate, I can't do anything now, so it's basically out of my life. Belanger traces the onset of back pain to one date. It was a team scrimmage on September the 26th, 1984. Belanger got his first warning of back trouble the day after he was slammed into the boards. He told team trainers he felt a sharp pain in his lower back. Ultrasound therapy was tried, but when the pain persisted, a lumbar spine CT scan was done. The report, sent to Penguin's team doctor Charles Stone in September of 1984, revealed that Belanger had two bulging discs in his lower back. The condition of those discs, it said, may be of some clinical significance in view of the patient's young age. If clinically warranted, further studies appear to be appropriate. The Belangers say no one bothered to inform them of the diagnosis. It was five years before they finally learned what the diagnosis had been in 1984. While Don Meehan wouldn't talk about the Belanger case with CBC, his letters to the Belangers indicate he didn't learn of the original injury or the CT scan until 1989. But the Belangers insist Meehan knew about the continuing back problems and never requested any medical information on Belanger's back from the Penguins even when he underwent surgery at 87. For a person like myself or my, my parents, uh, we don't know anything about, and it's not our obligation to find out these things. It's, again, my agent to advise me that, uh, well, you shouldn't go down. You have so many games. If you play this many, you won't be, if something happens down the road, you know, you won't be eligible. Uh, no, nobody ever told me that. The kid is young. The kid's dedicated himself to hockey. He's not sophisticated. The agent is it. The agent is really who the kid looks to. Back pain is one of the most controversial subjects in medicine. It can accompany a severe back trauma, or it may not appear till years after the injury. 30% of the public have bulging discs, for instance, and many don't even realize it. What is clear, however, is that in a high-risk occupation such as pro hockey, players like Roger Belanger, who experience pain and disability with disc problems, require greater vigilance from the training staff. But after Belanger reported the onset of his back pain, the Penguins simply held him out of the first two games of the 1984 and 85 season. Even then, Pittsburgh merely put the young player on the standby list, not on the injured list. For NHL purposes, that meant there was no official record of Belanger's back injury ever occurring. I was told that uh, basically I was going to outgrow that. Um, and again, me being first year, um, and not in a position to argue with uh, professionals, uh, doctors, this, whatever. Um, I didn't really say too much about it, and I kept going. Fellow Pittsburgh rookie Doug Bodger remembers the medical staff on the cash-starved Penguins. Well, it was not what I expected. I thought, uh, you know, it was you know, going to be you know, a first-class organization. You think in the National Hockey League, you think, you know, you're, the way you're treated is, is uh, you know, first-class and everything. Having been told he'd outgrow his back problems, Belanger threw himself into his rookie season. 
his hard hitting drew attention from the fans and from the press early on. But the physical style caught up to him in November. Belanger had to miss 19 games over the next three months with knee or ankle problems. Everything was really weak because of my back. Because um, your back obviously controls your whole body. And, uh, and my knee was a vulnerable uh, spot and I just happened to get hit and I sprained it and I was out for probably a month. And then not soon after that I hurt my other knee. Despite Lemieux's fine rookie season, the Penguins lost with numbing regularity and the crowds deserted the team. So in March, after chalking up just three goals and five assists in 44 games, Roger Belanger was returned to junior hockey. This in spite of NHL rules that forbid teams from demoting injured players and thereby denying them their NHL salaries. Of course, the Belangers still had no idea how badly hurt Roger was. They only knew his $75,000 a year salary was now being reduced to $40 a week. I really don't know how they were disappointed or how, what they were so upset about when everybody else was so happy. Um, you know what I mean? So, But they saved some money, too. They, well, yeah, we can basically nip that in the bud and, and say that's what basically they were trying to do is was save some money. Belanger played one exhibition game that fall at the Montreal Forum against the Canadiens. Despite the pain in his back, Belanger was awarded the game's first star. But the next day, he was sent to the Penguins farm team in Baltimore. Belanger never wore an NHL sweater again and never collected the bulk of his contract negotiated by Don Meehan. It's just like he kind of fell off the earth. It, uh, uh, the, the team wouldn't, you know, we said, where's Roger? And they said, no, we don't know where he is. And so it was kind of pretty much hidden in the back door. By the time he returned home to Welland following his third pro season, however, it was clear Belanger's back pain was getting worse. The back problems had reached a critical stage. This time they would have to believe him about the pain he was enduring. And I was walking like a 90-year-old uh, gentleman and uh, I was crouched over 90, 90 degrees and couldn't, couldn't, make it, couldn't do anything. And at that time, uh, my dad and I just uh, said, this, enough's enough, we gotta get some, some help here. Doctors told the Boulangers the only solution for Roger's disc problem was an operation. In a memo, the Penguins trainer Steve Thomas admitted to club officials that the damage in Roger's back stems from an original injury which occurred on September 26, 1984. The Penguins then paid for the operation on Belanger's back. Did you try to get a second opinion? Did, uh, did your agent suggest perhaps a second opinion? Um, I didn't know I had an agent at that time. I, again, I'm not hearing from him. That's basically why my dad and I just picked up and did it ourselves. You're saying that uh, if to, to be a guy who would go out and get a second opinion would be considered a disturbance. Oh, my God. That would be unheard of. Are you kidding? I, I could never go out. And not when I was playing. I, I couldn't go out and get a second opinion. That never happened. In April of 1987, doctors in Pittsburgh removed most of the disc injured back in 1984. Belanger says he was assured he wouldn't need further surgery for at least five years. The Penguins then sent him home for the summer to rehab on his own, without a special rehab program. All the while, they left him available to any club that would shell out $35,000. There were no takers for Roger Belanger. But surgery and the summer were not enough to save his career or his dreams. By September, Roger Belanger would be under the knife for a second time in five months. Within a year, his career would be over.
It isn't just the pain and, uh, uh, of the disability that he's suffering. It isn't just the pain that he's got from a, a back problem or anything like that. There's a mental thing that happens here, and it happens to every athlete, I can assure you. The fact that they can't physically play anymore mentally disturbs them, and it's as bad as the pain they suffer. But, uh, the night of uh, something I tried to pursue since I was three years old, and it, it's all gone. And, and it, it went up so quick, and, and you know, without any explanations or anything or any help from anybody and it, it's mentally and physically it, it, it can ruin a person it's it basically did that for me